Hey guys, welcome to Eternal Midnight. Um, well, I just got out of seeing Detective Pikachu in the cinema. It was brilliant. Uh, Chad's already seen it, and we just thought we'd give our thoughts on the movie, um, what we liked about it, maybe some nitpicks, uh, and sort of give our ratings on it. Um, so what did you think of it? I had a blast. It yeah. just, it's like, uh, my age, I'm 32, so it's like, I, I've been here since, like, Pokemon first started here in the States, at least. Yeah. Like. I think I was like, I was maybe 10 or I think I was like 10 or yeah, probably 10 years old when um, uh, Red and Blue first got released here. So it's like, I've been here since the beginning. <laughs> Pikachu's like, always been a thing in my, uh, well, Pokemon has always been a thing when I, as I've been alive, it's always been there. So I've mm-hmm. just grown up in a world that has always had Pokemon. Exactly. Um, it's and it's cool. like, so it's like, obviously, you know, fell off during some of my later years, you know, yeah. when I got my early 20s it was like yeah i don't want to play the game anymore i don't care about the new ones and then just you know that nostalgia wave hits you at some point and i'm like oh i'm gonna go back and play some of them yeah and uh, you know obviously i played like let's go i'm excited for sword and shield that are coming out and uh when i heard the movie was coming out i was like all right how do you make a pokemon how do you make a live (laughs) action pokemon how do you do this i was like how do you make a movie about a kid going around catching as many pokemon as he can battling gems and going to the elite four and then um but so that's what i like about it is they just they they just set a story in the world of pokemon instead of adapting yeah. something it could be honestly i don't know anything about the game detective pikachu no i've never played it from what i've heard it's really nothing like that i could be wrong don't know don't care i'm not gonna play yeah. it but i don't uh, see myself playing i like the main games i don't mm-hmm yeah, I don't play any of those side games like Mystery no. Dungeon or anything like that. It's or... something I might delve into down the line, but I've got a long list of games to get through first, and they don't really interest me. Um, oh, yeah. But the actual movie, Detective Pikachu, uh, the story itself is incredibly captivating. I mean, the acting isn't fantastic. It's not anything special, but at the no. same time, the characters were really captivating. Um I think it's like you go to a superhero movie, you don't expect Oscar winning acting. It's the same sort of thing for this. I went into a video game movie. How many good video game movies are there? Um, Go back and listen to our episode. (laughs) Exactly. So to be entirely honest, this is the only video game movie I would actually call good, other than Papers, Please's short 10 minute film. This is the only one I would definitively call a good movie. Um, It stands on its own two legs. I don't think any other video game movie does that. Most of them rely on the campiness, the cheesiness, the so bad it's good factor, or the actors. They don't, on as a movie, they don't stand on their own two legs. There's always something that you watch it for, like when you watch The Room. Um, <laughs> but Detective Pikachu, I can look at that and I can just say, without the games behind it, this is good. This is great. Yeah, it's it really was, fun. It was a blast, and it's like. For someone my age, I mean, it, it was, I mean, I'm 32, uh-huh. I'm going to see a PG film. But the weird thing was there was there was no kids in my theater when I went. It was all adults who were there. So I was <laughs> they like... They had adult humor, though. Like, that's what I love. I love that because it's ballsy. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of IPs have stopped doing it. So Ratchet and Clank 1 to 3 uh, and uh, Deadlocked or Gladiator, depending on what region you're in, um, they had adult humor snuck in. So when you went back and played it again when you were older, you got the adult humor that you never mm-hmm. spotted as a kid. Uh, but they sort of weeded away from that in gaming and they weeded away from that in movies, I feel. But then Detective Pikachu comes in with references to cocaine and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm now like, right, this is great. It's going right over my brother's head that sat next to me. He's nine. But I'm sat there laughing my ass off because it's, it's like, yeah, we're a PG movie, but we've got Ryan Reynolds. We're going to sneak some adult jokes in mm-hmm. here for you who... Because they know that there's fans coming in that are going to be adults. They don't want it to be overly kiddy, And I think they really got their audience right. Because it's a movie made for kids that can also be watched and enjoyed by adults. And that's the perfect sort yeah, of way Yeah, because... To- they had to find that perfect medium for my audience, mm-hmm. who's been here since the beginning when I was a kid, yeah. and we'll just say like your brother's audience and your audience who you've had it your whole life, and they yeah. don't know what – they've got to be able to appeal to the five-year-olds who just started playing, uh-huh. and they've got to appeal to people my age who've been here since the beginning. So exactly. it's like – and I, I genuinely really enjoyed it. Like I would almost – like if someone was to ask me what would you compare – the the humor in this too i definitely say uh, along the lines of shrek mm-hmm. it's it's got that perfect blend of family 
and that subliminal adult humor mixed in there where it's not right in your face. And I think like when it comes to swearing, I I think the only thing was Ryan Reynolds at one point he was in a cage and he's like, get me the hell out of here. I don't yeah. really any more swearing at all. Yeah, there wasn't swearing, but at the same time, I don't think it needed any. It's not a necessity. No, I meant that but... in a good way. Like, oh, it, right. OK, yeah it, yeah. it didn't. It wasn't trying to be ballsy or edgy. It oh, just no. it just was a family fun film. Like, that's yeah. what I loved about it, because we don't really get we don't really get mo- many movies like this anymore. We don't. We get, oh. the, you know, the balls out superhero movies, R rated movies feel like they're starting to come back. Or we get the f- extremely fam- family friendly Disney films. So yeah. it's cool finally getting that nice blend of a, a, a good mix between kid and adult that both groups can enjoy and yeah. get their own thing out of it. Yeah, no, uh, I think the most comparable thing was um, in Endgame when Captain America lifts up Mjolnir. Um, that's how it felt watching all these Pokemon in their natural habitats and watching all these Pokemon, you know, that you've seen in all the games because it didn't just appeal to the Gen 1 fans, the Gen 2 fans, the Gen 3, whatever Gen you love, it had a Pokemon from each one. Mm-hmm. So I feel like no matter what, if you're a Pokemon fan, there's something in it for you. And at the core of the movie, obviously, you have the titular character Pikachu, um, everyone's fan favorite. And, you know, he's the poster boy. He's the Mickey Mouse of Pokemon. But um, they appealed to every single generation because they were just sprinkled out throughout the entire world, a bunch of different Pokemon. I thought that was mm-hmm. really that was really nice. Uh, like I saw Trico and uh, Totodile and I, I, that was great. Oh, I- that's and you know what that is legit what i spent the majority of the film what doing i obviously yeah. am watching it for the story but i just spent the majority of the movie anytime like you know they're doing like a long shot or nobody's really talking i'm like scanning everywhere i'm like where's another pokemon where's something i haven't seen yet so like that yeah seeing trico at the uh, motel or the apartment complex on the other side of the glass just yeah. hanging on the glass being you know, like a gecko, like kind of like what he is. Yeah, exactly. Or all the apom hanging out on the sign outside, like they would probably do if Pokemon was real. Or like the Growlithe walking around with the police officers, the Machamp stopping traffic. It just, yeah. it felt like they did such a good job, in my opinion, of showing us a world that plausibly, you know, exists within this movie's universe. And to me, none of it felt forced at all it felt no. like an actual plausible world where this is how if you lived in this world this is how it would be interacting and living alongside pokemon yeah i think a huge thing that immediately told me they were going to handle the integration of pokemon into the real world really well was when it opened up and you saw the pokemon birds flying instead of your usual seagulls crows whatever mm-hmm. have you um seeing them and then instead of cows you had pokemon in the pens as well you just sort of immediately saw, saw this world with pokemon in it and it was so normal and natural and from the very very beginning um the only thing i didn't get was cubone being there because i like the whole original thing in red and blue way there's only one cubone who wears the skull as a mask because mm-hmm. now i'm sort of i see that and i go what well, every single cubone wears the skull of his mother that was so that was like sad and funny at the same time he's just yeah. sitting in a field weeping his eyes out i'm like it was that a good scene thing. But i just don't understand the lore of the cubone because i thought they, they clearly changed it after the original game because it was too dark but um, definitely because i forgot was it was it cubone or marowak who was in uh lavender town in the tower it was cubone right like they put the, i think oh, so it? I, oh, I haven't played Red or Blue in so long. Marowak, let me have a look here. Uh, yeah, Marowak. Oh, Marowak, that's, yeah. That's the mother, isn't it? Yeah, Marowak oh, is yeah. the evolved... Yeah. Yeah, so I, I did enjoy it, though. Um, it was a good scene, and I think what I loved most, though, outside of... Because uh, that felt like the small town you always start in in the games, which I loved. Um, I loved seeing the city. The city, which was definitely based on London. You mm-hmm. could tell. Oh, big time. But the fact that every single thing, it was so colorful, it was so rich with culture. Yes. It had yes. so much little nods to Pokemon stuff all over the place. It felt so organic and real, and it was brilliant. It felt like how a city that operates like the city does would actually operate, where mm-hmm. it's the Pokemon living and working alongside uh, uh, the trainers and you know yeah. just who they're with. Uh, and that's why it's like, I think... Personally, I think that worked for this movie. Mm-hmm. I do think when it comes to the next movie, though, uh, because that's the one thing that's left out of this movie is 
Uh, I mean, there's one scene of the main character trying to catch a Pokemon. Yeah. And we didn't see any. I mean, we saw kind of a trainer battle, you could say, mm-hmm. but we didn't we didn't see anybody going out catching Pokemon. We didn't see trainer battles. We didn't see any gym battles. Which, but you have to factor in the way this city works. Isn't no, that's, that's that, not a thing. I'm agreeing. I'm saying yeah. for this movie. I think oh, yeah, doing yeah. it the way they did worked. It gave mm-hmm. us a chance to see this world that they're building and they're going to obviously expand upon with a sequel. But I think in a sequel, we need to see a few more things that um, are part of the games. Maybe We don't have to see the eight gym battles in the Elite Four or anything, but yeah. I, I'd like to, I think the one... I think the one species that I don't think we saw was like Ice or Dragon, really. I don't think... Uh, we inside, saw Gyarados. Yeah, that yeah, true, true. And a Charizard. Yeah. Is he a I dragon just, or is I, I always thought that was see, was that the weird one where he looks like a dragon but he's in a dragon type? He started out as just a fire flying, I think, even though oh, you yeah. couldn't make him you couldn't make him fly in red and blue, but in gold and silver you could make him fly. Mm-hmm. I think somewhere along the line, because I played I think I played Ruby Sapphire a little bit. I didn't really like him, and I didn't play any main games after that. Yeah. I think he eventually became a dragon type, but I don't oh, right. remember. But see, but uh, I just eventually down the line, I'd like to see um, trainer battles, maybe some more recognizable characters from mm-hmm. the games or anime as uh, other trainers or something. But yeah, for for starting out this world that they're obviously going to build upon, I think this definitely was the smartest way to go. An original story where you're not picking from the lore or anything, and you're Uh just building the world naturally without shoving in references. And the only real references in the movie itself is the Pokemon you see. Those, they are the references, and it works. That's what makes sense about this. Well, I would love to see in a sequel... um if they do a sequel, because I don't know if they could just tell a different story in the same world. Uh, that's personally what I'd lean to. If they did a sequel, though, I'd love to see him building a team uh, so alongside Pikachu, having a whole team. But then he's also becoming a detective, so at the same time, I think they'll probably delve into that, which is why I'd rather they just went ahead and said, we're done with this character, we're done with these people, um, this city's interesting, he's probably going to you know, become a detective here, that's how his life's going to go. So let's jump back and follow another character in the same world, who's Definitely. maybe training a team of Pokemon. Um, I think that would be really interesting to see. I think the only problem is what really sold this movie to me was how he could communicate with his Pokemon. Um, yeah, that that's a that's like the biggest point of the movie. And yeah. without delving into major spoilers, there's going to be a few. It's not going to happen again. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So it's going to be weird to see that dynamic again. I don't think they should adapt the game straight. Um, if they try and do that, I think, yeah, it's just going to be, I caught a Pokemon, time to fight a gym leader. Exactly. I don't think they should do that. I think what should happen is that we get a few trainer fights and the story's more revolving around something like uh, a Team Rocket stealing people's Pokemon and in a certain region and they want to stop it, um, rather than the whole fighting the gyms and becoming the ultimate trainer. I wouldn't do that. I would just have someone that's passionate about training Pokemon, who loves their Pokemon, who has a great bond with them. Um, trying to help other people. I think playing the role of hero, maybe. Um, I think if you want to show a gym battle, do it. Um, do it like at the beginning, and maybe you know. I know a lot of movies don't do these nowadays. Maybe just do a gym battle over with the in- opening credits playing or something like that. Just do yeah. like a quick one to show what it's like, or you know, shove in a reference to either Misty or Brock, maybe from mm-hmm. Red and Blue. I don't know. You just have a regular. Or you can just show different characters. You don't have to show who your main character is. Just show different characters doing gym battles or something like that. Or, or you know, it, you don't have to necessarily interweave that even into the story itself. But maybe just show it or show it mm-hmm. on television or something. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. Personally, the way I would have it handled is you see more battles in the sequel or another movie. Because uh, I love the, the final battle in this movie and I would have loved more of that. Mm-hmm. So... I think in another Pokemon movie, I would have it so it's more about Team Rocket or another one of the teams from the game stealing people's Pokemon, and the whole story is to try and stop this, this you know, sort of evil group in the region. And um, I think the way to do that would be rather than having a big gym battle, you'd have battles with this team, um, like a giant final climactic battle with a few in between on the way there, that sort of thing, and just show how it is outside of that world, that city. 
uh, how people you know handle their conflict which is through pokemon battles and i think that'd be really interesting to see um and building mm. a team would be really cool because you could get to know all these pokemon you could see their bond growing and um you could see some really interesting pokemon pull them from all different generations if you want to. oh easily I, and i mean people like if you watch the old anime no matter what you think of it i mean i agree with you ash i can't stand ash he's mm-hmm. like the worst trainer of all time yeah but, uh, I mean, it was like his Pokemon didn't speak to him in words, yet we still felt the bond that he felt yeah. with them. You can do that, even though your Pokemon will not be speaking to you. You can still mm-hmm. build that connection for the audience to relate to them and feel for these characters. So it's yeah. not out of the realm of possibility, and it's really not that hard. If an anime can do it, I have a feeling after this movie, they can do it also. It's because... also made me incredibly optimistic for video game movies. Mm-hmm. I think if they need to learn from this. You do not straight adapt the game. You don't. No, you can't. And you have to sort of build a story in the same world. Um, I, think I, that's what Rampage, I think that's what Rampage tried to do, but they went for... There was no story. It was an arcade that's game. That's what I meant. They went for almost more stupid mm-hmm. than they did, whereas this focused on story while not adapting a game. Yeah, that's the thing. So you took the Pokemon world, you took the core concept of Pikachu being a detective, and you created a whole story around it. I think this someone said it's a, com- a combination of the original two games. Never played them, so I can't comment. But either way, I think the way they did do this is great. I think there's something to be learned here. The only games that I could see being straight adapted are stuff like Mortal Kombat. But in a world like Pikachu's, uh, Detective Pikachu's even, and Pokemon's, I think you just want to jump into that world. You want to show the Pokemon in their natural habitat, and you want to sort of put a core story and a character arc, and you want to just make it a movie. Rather than setting it in Earth, you set it in the Pokemon world, and that's how you tell it. Um I think it's it's not that hard. They pulled it off. Um, I think they can do it again. I'm just Easily. hoping that we we see it again because I don't want this to be the only one. I, I was left wanting more of this world. I want to go back in the cinema and experience seeing all these Pokemon on the big screen again. Oh, I just I just loved it. It was like mm-hmm. between the the whole herd of Bulbasaur walking around. Yes. Um, just everywhere you, it was almost like everywhere you looked, you saw another Pokemon and it just yeah. made it feel so cool because it was just like, it hits that like fanboy in you where you're just like, Oh, I recognize that one. I recognize <laughs> that one. There's that one. Oh, he's in the movie. Didn't they get to see that one? There it is. Look at that one over there. Yeah. And it, it just felt so like fun. That's what I miss about movies like this, where it's like, whether there's like, I mean, to me, there are no major flaws in the movie. So it just, no. it made it fun i had just a lot of fun watching this and that yeah. was my favorite part of this. it was just a fun time that and i, I think... could just relax and not sit and think about plot holes mm-hmm. or oh wait they said this they didn't do that it's like who gives a <laughs> shit yeah i think even though there was, the narrative isn't entirely strong and this there are some flaws and it feels a little bit cheesy at times but you know it is a video game movie you've got to sort of lower your expectations with stuff like this and even it's a video game movie and a kids movie that's what we exactly. that's the hardest thing so, with me where i like came out and i was like starting to kind of overthink and i'm like it's pg it is a kids movie i cannot yeah. sit and overthink this it's not an oscar winning masterpiece it's nothing it's not a breakthrough in cinema but it's a fun movie and i think even even just looking at it as a movie in terms of how it's made it is good and i think um the thing that stood out to me is no scene was boring in appearance or in writing um every single scene was colorful and rich and just so visually pleasing i mean i think a huge part of that was the way they built the city you know, mm-hmm. there was always some color in the city. Every single scene, there was no bland scenes. There, there was nothing about it was gray and miserable and brown and ugly. It was That's always. What I, I agree. That's what one of my favorite things was how much color was thrown mm-hmm. into this film. There was just color everywhere. It was great. Yeah, and I, I love that because a lot of movies are going with this edgy, darker thing. I, you can do a mature movie that isn't, you know, too dark too miserable and has a bland color palette just as you can do a fun movie with it and i think they pulled it off and it really fit the tone and it it worked and i i just want to see them do more of it and i think seeing the small town at the start was really cool i want to see more of that uh i love how the tall grass was was done (laughs) that's where Um, cubone was hiding 
Yeah, that felt right out of a Pokemon game. I loved it. So what did you think of the villain? What um, did you think of his... I mean, I ob- obviously, I think someone of our age, we we probably saw it coming because it uh-huh. was, it was kind of cliched. Please go do this. So-and-so is evil. Yeah, you're the evil one. Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> but, Bill, it's Bill Nye. Bill Nye, oh, I know. however you say it. So it, he's great. <laughs> He is. He's Everything simplistic, comes. he's two-dimensional, he's a very obvious villain, but it is so fun to watch his performance. Mm. I just don't I care. Just, oh, exactly. I just, I I mean, it, like we said, it was cheesy, but it was like, it mm-hmm. was... It, to me, it it was almost a weird plan, but it was almost like mm-hmm. he was he was a very odd villain. I mean, I guess yeah. I'll just say, oh, fuck it, I don't care. I'm We're just putting gonna spoilers say in the title done. anyway. Yeah, I don't care. I'm just gonna say what his plan was. His plan was to capture Mewtwo mm-hmm. and mind control it and put himself in Mewtwo's body, and then combine all the humans with their Pokemon. So the humans now become their Pokemon and like inhabit and possess them, which yeah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I, I get why you wanted to be Mewtwo. <laughs> why does everyone else have to suffer though? <laughs> yeah. Like, I I mean, imagine being a Psyduck. Oh, oh God. Jesus. There's some people who they're like, oh, I wish I didn't fucking pick this Pokemon. <laughs> hey, imagine all the people who got to be a ditto though. They, I mean, they were fine. Oh yeah, they would. Except for the eyes. Except for the yeah, eyes. Yeah, you can get away with that sunglasses sword, but <laughs> that was so creepy when that oh, I know. that girl took her glasses off and we saw the eyes. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> then they used a character we knew with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so what would you uh, what would you rate the movie? Oh. For me, it's a four star movie. Oh, let's. You know what? I got to give it the same on a scale of ten. I'd go. I'd give it a seven because mm-hmm. it was just. It was just. It was so much fun. Like, yeah. I wasn't bored in this. At no point. I mean, I didn't even really want it to end. I wanted to. No. I wanted to keep going, but it just. It's probably a know, seven point five to like a seven point seven for me. So I don't. Yeah. Very very good movie. Um, I want to go see it again. If you haven't yeah. seen it, if you haven't seen it at this point, I hate to sound like I'm a traitor or whatever. I don't care. Go go see it. You don't need to see Endgame again. You've seen it three or oh, four no. times. Well, there's this. Go see Detective then, Pikachu. There's this John Wick three, Godzilla, and uh, there's another movie, um, Brightburn. So mm. oh, I can. So wait there's four movies that I'm seeing that aren't Endgame. I'm done with Endgame now. Um, seen it twice. Don't need yeah. to see it again till Blu-ray. Yeah, that's enough for me, and this is one I'll be getting on Blu-ray for sure. 4K oh, Blu-ray, easily. definitely. Because yeah. now, because when it comes out on Blu-ray, that's another thing I'm excited for, is to any scene where it's like a large wide shot or something of the city, I just want to pause. pause it so mm-hmm. I can see who I didn't see when I saw it in theaters, because that oh, was definitely. Just... And I mean, what? let me see. Okay, I bet you we had the same hardest laugh scene. The interrogation scene with Mr. Mime when... Um, <laughs> When he did, like, he was like, all right, I figured it out. And he did, like, do the lock, and he climbed in yeah. and started pouring the gasoline so on him. The fact that he still <laughs> threw the light, though, after. <laughs> that that so, accidentally drops the invisible match, and Mime starts freaking out. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I have to say, though, the visual spectacle that was when the um, entire landscape started to bend around them and shift and move. Oh, that, that cool. got me. I was like, what the fuck? is going on and a lot of people said the third act is where the movie falls apart i think it had a weak third act in comparison to the first two but by no means was the third act bad it was still really good i mean like we said it was kind of a it was it was an expected villain it was decently cliche but it's like you know what it again it's a kid's movie i mean and it's like i don't i don't really view it as falling apart i just view it as i mean what what did you want them to do? Mewtwo start killing people? Uh, yeah, I think it, it sort of ended the way I was... It, it ended nicely. It had a good, happy ending, which for any kid's movie, I think it's sort of a requirement at this point. Mm-hmm. You can't do a dark, morbid ending with a kid's movie because the kid no. will leave and they'll be like, I never want to go watch them again. But <laughs> Like they did with Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, okay, end game sales, I, but... I did just think of one thing. I'm not going to call this a negative against the movie. I'm going to call this almost a negative against myself and how I perceived the movie. Yeah. Obviously, growing up, watching the cartoon, uh, watching uh, the other cartoon movies and whatnot, I've always had uh, the cartoon's voices of what the Pokemon sound like in my head. Like, when I mm. see Psyduck, I automatically think of exactly how he sounded in the anime. Oh, right. 
I then didn't watch enough just, of the anime for that. Okay. And then just hearing some of their voices being different. That's why I'm saying it's a negative against me, not the yeah. film. Because it was just what I was expecting to hear. So it wasn't bad. It was just more like I expected to hear Psyduck and Mewtwo one way, but they sounded different. So mm-hmm. definitely not a negative. Just more of a I was expecting it, didn't get it. But by the end of the movie, I was I, I enjoyed it. I think the only one was I prefer Mewtwo's voice from the way he sounded in Mewtwo Strikes Back, the first Pokemon movie cartoon mm-hmm. that came out years ago. But overall, he was perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, I I, I haven't seen enough of the anime because I couldn't get through Ash's unbearable, <laughs> shitty personality. So for me, all I ever wanted to watch the anime for was to see these Pokemon in their natural habitats and to see them as a part of the world rather than just you walk through some tall grass and you find them in the games. So to see that in the movie was that that that's all I wanted, and I'm so happy we got that. So yeah. um, and I can't wait for the sequel. Yeah, I can't wait. So to wrap up our thoughts, what what did you what what would you say overall? Yeah, so overall, I'm just yeah, I say go see it. Mm-hmm. Seriously, go see it. if you're looking for a movie that you're just gonna have fun with, you want to feel nostalgic mm-hmm. with, you just want to sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. You know, like g- this is a type of movie where you can just go and de-stress. You're not gonna stress out over the movie. There's not anything too convoluted. There's nothing too complex, and you can just sit back, feel nostalgic, and look at some Pokemon that to me just look. I thought they looked great. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously looked they looked cartoony but that's the world they live in so that's the way they were meant to look so i i I had a great time i can't wait to see it again yeah i think it was brilliant um i'll be having a more detailed review of uh, a written one um and i'll share that in the comments when that's out um that won't have spoilers but if you want to hear like a more sort of uh you know reflective view that i my more reflective view rather than my immediate thoughts i'll have that up in the comments uh but yeah, I mean, overall, I'd say it was really fun. I don't really have that many problems with it. I think it's a kid's movie doesn't excuse it from, you know, having flaws. But this movie didn't really have that many, so it doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it was designed for kids, but it also appeals to adults. And I think that's the perfect way to do a movie like this. So, yeah, I'd, say, uh, yeah, I'd say four stars. Definitely. Mm-hmm. They did a great job with it. And I just hope... Uh... I, I just hope for the sequel, they're able to possibly get the same writers and mm-hmm. keep the same tone going. You know, don't it, it worked. Don't don't change it up. Just maybe mm-hmm. next time, don't fucking release it around. <laughs> and don't release it between Endgame, Godzilla, Aladdin, everything else that's coming out next time, yeah. please. You know, that's another thing. Hollywood, stop releasing almost every of your big movies in April and May. God, this would have been a good September movie. Oh, I easily, and it probably would have made more money. But yeah. Oh well, I mean, I'm just hoping that they they pull this back with DVD and Blu-ray sales. I think they will. That, oh, easily, this will be a big one for uh, because what is it right now? It's May. This will probably come out on Blu-ray in mm, October, November. Yeah. So yeah, this this will be a good. This will be a nice present that a lot of kids are gonna get for Christmas. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, if you guys want to hear more reviews, hear more immediate thoughts, um, we're also going to be doing a sort of news geekly, uh, geekly news roundup series. We're going to be starting that. Um, that'll come out every weekend. Uh, if you want to keep up on all of that, uh, so hit the subscribe button and follow our Facebook page. Where we'll keep you up to date. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys. Hey guys, so uh, I just got out of the cinema. Um, I saw Detective Pikachu, and uh, Chad's already seen it, so we thought we'd just record our our thoughts on the movie. Oh. (laughs) Wait, stop fucking moving about, you little prick. Get off the... Okay, hold on. I give him a treat, he'll stop. You want me to stop it and we start over? Uh, You can just cut this, right? Okay. (laughs) What happened was... Was that your? Was that one of the mice or one of the uh, rats? The rats, yeah. He just jumped on the cage door. Fucking <laughs> shit. All right. <laughs> Whatever, you're ready. <laughs> Little shit. All right. So I have to say, um, and spoilers for Endgame here, uh, but the Russos lifted their ban. Watching this movie and seeing all these Pokemon in their natural habitats, which is what I've always enjoyed about the anime, but I could never get into it because of Ash. <laughs> You can cut this right. <laughs> Absolutely. What are you two doing? <laughs> I've never heard them make that noise. <laughs> Just freaked out. <laughs>
Jesus, were they fighting or something? <laughs> what the shit? Yeah, so... <laughs> sorry about that. 